Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear learners, welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture 11. In this lecture, we are going to read reading exercises based on stress, intonation and accent. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, Matra, and today we are going to discuss that how stress plays an important role, how intonation changes the tone of any person or reflects the mood of any person, maybe sometimes the emotions also, rising intonation, falling intonation, sometimes rise and fall intonation. So, it actually depicts the mood or temperament of any person. So, being a legal, uh, being a person uh, you can say linked with legal background, all of you who are aspiring to be a and uh, a successful lawyer, obviously you must know how to study the body language, the rising falling intonation, the stress, because all these things play an important role while judging the evidence, the proof, sometimes the witness on the basis of forensic background, sometimes by judging it through medical officers. So, now we are going to discuss about speech sounds. First of all, I would like to tell you although we have already discussed in our previous lecture that there are there are 44 speech sounds and you very well know that out of those 44 speech sounds there are 20 vowel sounds and 24 consonant sounds in this condition that vowel sound and consonant sounds they are used together these phonemes are combined together to form up the words with the formation of those words together, they create the sentences and then those sentences when they are pronounced in a proper manner, they will definitely reflect or tell you whether this is a noun or a verb, whether it is an adjective or an adverb. So, you would be able to check on the basis of stress and intonation that which kind of temperament that person has, which kind of body language and and, and rising falling intonation will decide the uh, actual truth. With this note, I would like to take you to the learning outcomes of our lecture. So, with this, yes, so what would be the learning outcomes? Basically, after completing this lecture, my dear learners, you all will be able to recognize the stress patterns. The stress patterns, when it comes to stress pattern, what is the most important thing that you have to understand? That stress is always put like an apostrophe. If I talk about this is the particular thing, if I use the stress on this particular word, we will use syllables, right? For example, if I take up the word B A N A N A, banana banana. Now, in this condition, how many syllables are there? Banana. There are three syllables for your understanding. So, you are going to understand first of all the syllables. First syllable that is B, na, na. So, there are three syllables, but stress should be put on only one syllable, remember. And one syllable will be decided on the basis of certain rules and regulations that I will tell you what are these rules for your kind information. Now, in this condition there are three syllables and you are going to put that syllable on stress, stress I should say stress on the second one banana, banana rest of this thing they are, they are unstressed they are unstressed, but in this condition how are you going to put that stress, stress mark will be used as an apostrophe, I am using it like this as an apostrophe, moreover like an
Is that clear everyone? So, this is again like an apostrophe. So, you would be able to recognize the stress pattern point number 1 after this lecture and after this you would be able to understand the word stress. Now, in this condition the word stress means you must know about the uh, which word has to be stressed upon. Learn about the sentence stress awareness. Now, sentence stress awareness means that you must know something more about this thing that where this stress should be put and where this whole thing should be created. My and then of course, you are going to talk about intonation. So, after that you all will be able to understand the intonation pattern also. Intonation I told you that whenever you speak a sentence, there has to be a stress on certain words and that will actually decide the intonation whether it is a rising intonation or falling intonation or maybe rising falling intonation. Okay. So, remember whenever we talk about intonations the most important words would be highlighted and stressed upon. Be aware of cultural variations because we many people from different dialects and different backgrounds because India is a like diverse country. Here we can find different types of people from different backgrounds. That means, somebody is from Chennai, somebody is from Bengal, somebody is from Northeast, someone is from UP. The way of speaking changes because of their dialectical influence, because of their cultural influence sometimes. So, remember you would be able to identify them very properly and further you would be proficient enough in effective communication on the basis of learning the stress and intonation. Then we are going to develop the analytical skills. How are you going to analyze certain sounds? If the same word is speak, spoken as a noun, that will carry the stress on, on the first syllable. Whereas, if the same word is used as a verb, that will carry the stress on the second syllable. Understood? For example, if I give you this word exam, this is a noun if, if I am going to put, a, put the stress on first syllable this is a noun, but when it is used as, as a verb that will here I am going to put a stress on second syllable because this is a verb. Is that clear my dear learners everyone right? Because it makes a difference remember it makes a difference when it is when the same word is used as a noun and the same word is used as a verb. Pronunciation changes ok clear then you would be able to analyze that difference. Yes, last but not the least you would be able to integrate knowledge with language skills. All your knowledge of stress and intonation you will uh, an accent would be compiled together with your language skills. So, these are the learning outcomes along with that you would learn all these intricate parts of it. Yes, further we, we are going to discuss the contents. What are the contents that we are going to discuss in this? First of all, we will discuss the introduction, what are, what do you mean by stress, what do you mean by introduction, uh, intonation and accents. Further, you would be able to understand the clarity of speech, the clarity of speech because once you would understand where the person is trying to stress upon, which word is most important in this, clear? So, remember like suppose if I say I want a cup of coffee. Now, in this condition what is most important? I, I want, I want a, I want a cup of coffee. This one is the stressed portion, I want a, I want a cup of coffee. So, in this condition this one is stressed whereas, this is a pronoun, I want a, I want a, I am not going to say I want a. Instead of that I want, I am just reducing the length of that word when while speaking. So, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna cup of coffee, cup of coffee is the stressed part. Remember, so whenever the word is noun, adverb, sometimes the words which are adjectives, they are stressed. Whereas, conjunctions, articles, prepositions, they are mostly unstressed in a sentence. 
Further you would learn about the contents, clarity of speech, you would learn accent, then you would learn stress, what are the meanings of intonation, rising falling intonation, pace that is speed. What would be the speed of utterance? What would be the speed of utterance that you have to understand everyone, right? Because this is again a very important part, how fast you speak, how much uh, you are able to hide your actual emotions. So, there are different traits, there are different uh, uh, methods where you can judge through the person, uh, judge a person through his way of speaking, through the speed of his speaking. Yeah, so all my legal uh, like uh, learners who are here, please uh, understand this aspect that this is really very important. Vocabulary and expressions, yes of course, vocabulary and expressions plays an important role, where you would learn that how these new terminologies could be used, could be uttered, could be pronounced in a proper manner with stress. Practice and feedback, yes, once you learn those practice part, you would learn how to go on with that. Then you will learn the cultural awareness, this we have already discussed in the previous one, that you all will learn about the cultural awareness, different cultures, heterogeneous backgrounds create a different kind of stress. Then stress in language and intonation in language, this is the last, these are few last things where I would explain you about how to put the stress, rules of stress and intonation. So with this note, shall we move further towards our lecture? where you all will understand that what is stress, creating stress, creating stress, accent and intonation suitable for the Indian speaker who emphasizes clarity of speech because the most important aim is to make the speech clear and make him more impressive, make him more appealing. This is our main concern and in this condition, this is the task to linguistically diverse with numerous languages. Whatever languages are there, there are 22, more than that languages over here right now. So, however, we can focus on more neutral and universally clear speech pattern that can adopt it, can be adopted by the speakers from various regions of India. So, further we will discuss about all these things considering it a parameter where Indian speakers would stand and we will definitely see different aspects from which they differ, they change their stress and intonation. So yes, how stress and intonation brings a clarity of speech? It brings a clarity of speech by pronunciation, by coming up with a perfect pronunciation and emphasizing the correct pronunciation of words, Indian English speaker often has a multiple, multiple pronunciations influenced by sometimes British, sometimes American, sometimes we are influenced by Latin and French. So, this is our way of dealing with it for a standardized and neutral accent. We have to like focus on standard way of dealing with things that is most important standard pronunciation because in dictionaries also we have British, we have American way of dealing with it. So, articulation, yes of course, we would be able to learn the articulation because it ensures each word to enunciate clearly with distinct sounds, avoid mumbling or speaking too quickly because pace will certainly make difference of everything, right? For example, if I say fast, if I say person, if I say beautiful, beautiful, if I say information, information, now in these four terms, you can identify that how many syllables are there. Syllables could be judged on the basis of the segments that you divide into. When you while speaking a word, how many segments you are taking, how many divisions you are taking. For example, if I say fast, fast, there is only one syllable, there is no stricture, there is no barrier, there is no rising falling, something like that. So, this is one syllable, right? It has only one syllable. Next, person, person, person. Here we have two syllables. What are they? Person, two syllables. Clear everyone? 
then if i talk about beautiful beautiful how many syllables can you hear beautiful again tell me in this condition how many we have three syllables we have three syllables beautiful so again we have three syllables remember information information in this condition in for mention we have four syllables clear so please concentrate how to find out the syllables here in for mention so there are four syllables so this is how you have learned how to find out the syllables point number 1 how to calculate how to count the syllables right once you are able to find out the syllables the basic rule for syllables and stress is that whenever there is a single syllable whenever there is a single syllable it would not be emphasized or there would no stress there would not be any stress but whenever there are whenever there are two or more than two syllables then only we can have stress in that word stress in that word for example here if i say fast we don't have any syllable here we, we there is only one syllable because it has to be more than one i told you and here person so where are you going to put this syllable this is stress where am i going to take there are two syllables but how am i going to put the stress person person right so i have put the stress on first syllable first syllable stress on i'm just going to write the entire thing stress on first syllable right everyone stress on first syllable if i talk about the next word beautiful i'm just not using the cursive writing so as to make it much clearer to you for examples how many like beautiful three syllables are there but where am i going to put the stress the stress would be on again the first one beautiful beautiful again so information 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 so here here i'm going to use informe in in for mention right so here i have put the uh, stress on before ma before the third syllable okay so this is the most important thing which you have to understood we have you all have understood everyone that how can how all of you can find out the syllables first of all and secondly you have understood how to put stress in the meanwhile i will definitely tell you uh, different other rules to check and to find where to put stress even in a sentence also okay so that will provide clarity of speech my dear learners and this is how you are going to judge whether that person who is speaking to you is telling lie or truth so let's move further accent so neutral accent should be followed every time encourage the neutral indian english accent accent that is easily understandable to a wide audience to a wide audience remember because this is not a matter of fact where you are conversing with even a, with with an individual who can understand you no this this kind of accent this kind of like language everyone should understand each and every person who is listening to you must understand so it must be essential for everyone to follow the neutral accent and avoid heavy regional accents avoid heavy regional accents because people from different uh, area different groups they have different kind of regional uh, you can say em uh, emphasis on their speech which changes a person from uh, malayalam for uh, one who speaks kannad one who speaks malayalam one who speaks bengali they do have different kind of accents so and and obviously the vocal quality the vocal quality because many speak with their nose nasalized sounds many speak with their throat so even smooth and even tone is respected over here 
avoid overly nasal or guttural sounds can be distracting nasal sound should be avoided and guttural sound should also be avoided where a lot of echoing sound is there so try to use that kind of sounds which are really very important so they are they are accents right natural accents are required and quality voice quality should be like that further we are going to talk about stress now word stress in our previous uh, slides also i have explained you how to put stress and how to count the syllables i would be coming up with several other features also of stress where some uh, words with an examples also to tell you about stress then further let's talk about word stress here teach the importance of correctly stressing now when it comes to correct stressing you must know that where to put stress and where not as if i told you if it is a noun it will carry the stress on first syllable if this is not a noun if the same word is used as a verb it will carry the stress on the second syllable remember so this is really very 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 important i'm using very thrice thrice just to make sure that you all have to be very particular about this when it comes to word stress let me teach you the importance of correctly stressing syllables in words this is crucial for clarity and meaning for example photograph stress the first syllable photograph okay how are you going to put the stress i told you an apostrophe mark almost an apostrophe mark will help you out to put the stress so this stress the first syllable sentence stress how are you going to put the stress on us in a sentence like which word would be stressed and which word would be unstressed that would be also a kind of like decision making how are you going to decide whether this word should be stressed um, he he uh, uttered a few words he uttered few words which were incorrect so i'm not going to use uh, uh, stress on he on on, on uh, some articles or prepositions or conjunctions rather i'm going to skip that part and uh, skip that part while stressing so highlight the significance of stressing certain words in a sentence to convey emphasis and context yes to enter to to emphasize on certain things and to clear the context i must use the stress part right for instance i didn't say he stole the money i didn't say he stole the money so what is the most important thing i didn't say i didn't say here what is the most important thing? say that he he stole the money he stole the money what is the most important thing the stress stress on i didn't say he stole the money so what is the most important thing say and stole the money the since it is an article unstressed so it can have different meanings depending on which word is stressed clear i didn't say say could be lesser tone right unstressed i didn't say that he stole the money so didn't is the most important stressed one if i say money if i focus on money so i i didn't say he stole money now in this condition i am putting stress on money so a same sentence will definitely have different stress and on the basis of that stress you will decide that whether this person is pointing out on which aspect so let's move up to the next part on intonation because in the future like in in the upcoming slides i would be explaining about the stress and would be talking about certain features certain rules of putting stress in a sentence and in the words along with intonations so now we'll talk about rising and falling intonation let me tell you about rising and falling intonation whenever there is a rising intonation it will be like this falling intonation like this rise fall would be like this okay so remember this is the rising intonation rising intonation falling intonation okay rising intonation and falling intonation clear 
So, you have to be very much perfect about that and sounds obviously symbols are going to help you out in order to understand that it is a rising intonation or falling intonation because it sets the pitch of your speech, the pitch whether it is or at high pitch or lower pitch. Okay? So, because intonation only decides the pitch of your speech, emphasize the use of rising intonation for questions and following intonation for statements. Am I right? Right. So, what am I using? Are you understanding? Yes, we are. So, for questioning somebody uses the high or rising intonation. Are you understanding? So, that is I am just raising, rising intonation. Yes, we are. So, this is falling. So, this is again an important one. Intonation for questions rising intonation for questions and falling intonation for statements. Let me make it very clear, rising for questions and falling for statements. Okay? So, this is the point where you have to understand. This helps convey the intended meaning clearly. You must know that because of that intonation, you would be able to understand the logics and meanings more clearly. In this condition, yes, emotional intelligence uh, intonation also plays an important role. It clearly indicates whether the person is angry, whether he is trying to give you the command or he is requesting you. Is he going to, uh, is he going for any kind of complaint? Are you trying to be fine? Are you trying to be uh, like uh, cool with me? So, am I trying to like uh, uh, telling that person that do not be very smart? So, or open the door, open the door, could you please open the door? That makes the difference of tone, intonation, right? So, it is it decides by the pitch, your tone, your accent, all these things matter a lot when you speak certain things. So, emotions, yes, raising, let me talk about this thing reflect emotions and emphasis. For example, raising the pitch for excitement and lowering it for seriousness. Alas, we lost the match. Alas, we lost the World Cup. So, now in this condition, I am using the falling intonation to express my grief, right? Whereas, if I am excited, if I say, hurrah, we cleared our exams. Hurrah, we attained good grades. So, in that condition, that clearly indicates this is an excitement. So, your words, your intonation, your stress, everything actually collaborates together to form up the scene, to form up that kind of ambience around it that whether this person has really done something wrong or I am trying to be fool myself. So, or is he trying to be fool myself? So, in that condition, I should write down that for rising questions are there, following statements. Again, I would like to write down, write down few more things. If I am raising the pitch, raising the pitch, that means this is excitement. This is showing excitement or happiness, happiness, right? But on the other hand, if I am lowering the pitch, lowering the pitch, that means this is grief sometimes or if I, if not grief, yes, unsatisfied or serious. Is that clear everyone? So, this is what stress and intonations are. You have to be very much perfect and very much uh, clear about stress and intonation. Now, let us discuss about something more pacing. Pacing is what? Speed. How much speed you are going to talk about? Like avoid speaking in a very high pace, at a high pace because whenever we speak at a high pace, remember that you would not be able to attain anything in that condition. You must clear it, you must understand that these things should be checked properly. right? Now, in this condition, what is the moderate speed? What is the moderate speed in that condition? And you must know that the moderate speed of it should be maintained in a manner. For example, it should promote the moderate speaking pace, speaking too fast, like running like a leopard, no, it is not required. 
right it can lead to unclear speech while speaking too slowly can be monotonous monotonous is boring obviously if i if i'm going to say promote a moderate speaking pace will you be able to understand no everyone would feel a little bit tedious or boring to attend this kind of lecture so maintain an average a normal flow of understanding remember this is really very much important and pauses yes of course pauses as if in writing we have punctuation mark right as if in writing skills we use punctuation marks we use comma we use periods we use m dash we use inverted commas quotes uh, colon semicolon many many others so and so forth ellipses in the same manner when we speak certain words we put we use pause we stop for a little while and then start clear just imagine we cannot actually utter a single uh, sentence or single paragraph without using the pause otherwise that will become so futile actually it won't approach you people remember so teach the use of appropriate pauses to allow the listener to digest information and emphasize key points because it is really very important if you use that position if you use that pauses that will create a kind of impression then only the readers the listeners would re reciprocate reciprocate on the basis of what you say okay so this is really very important when you utter a word when you utter a sentences without the pause so space means a lot pace is sound the speech speed basically further we shall talk about vocabulary and expressions like how these vocabulary and expressions change the meaning also when you don't follow that stress pattern or intonations also so rich vocabulary ensures or encourages you people to have a diverse and rich vocabulary i would certainly say keep learning keep mesmerizing new legal maxims and law words legal words they are really very important to express thoughts and to express ideas effectively you must know that clarity over complexity how can you bring about a kind of clarity clarity of thought clarity of expression by not using any complicated materials together by not making ambiguous remember so emphasize clarity in expressions over using complex words and phrases and clear communication should be the priority because we are not there to create ambiguous words right ambiguous or you are not there to change it in ambiguity everyone because this is the most important part clarity conciseness and cogency which is very much required here and then further we'll move up to the next one where we will talk about practice and feedback that how are we going to practice a lot practice a lot and we are going to work on the feedback side suppose if you have cleared uh, you have created a kind of like a written uh, paragraph or maybe you have composed you have drafted an fir okay sometimes a case law also and somebody is there to uh, like verbally or uh, you can say dictate it so several stenographers are there they they copy uh, the recordings they copy these testimonies they give the recordings of everything in the uh, court room and then uh, they have some fundamental uh, like uh, notebooks also some some notebooks are also there for further records so that these laws can be used for legal precedents so you must have the practice and feedback also feedback of everything that you have done anything like whatever you are speaking how, how which type of speaking you are doing how are you going to express yourself so regular practice is essential for improving clarity and expressions this is really very much important when it comes to clarity part you must know that regular practice makes man perfect yeah so without that kind of practice you must think you must not think yourself to be a superior person who have like okay honed the skills of uh, speaking or communication no you cannot go on with that with uh, without practicing a lot 
you need to practice a lot and then only you have you would be perfect enough. So, persistent, persistent I should write over here persistence and hard work is required for success right. So, for this kind of persistence and hard work is required for the success and if you are not going to deal with it, yes these things are not going to help you out. So, own speech to identify the areas of improvement. So, you must try to record your sound, sometimes you must try to record these sounds, your sound itself and try to uh, hear it time and again, so that you can definitely work out very well on your mistakes, on the errors, on the pronunciation aspect. If there is any kind of like uh, 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 spelling or like you can say pronunciation error that you have observed, please be very much particular about this. Record your sound, hear it twice or thrice, take peers also, peers feedback also, so that you can improvise your speech, that is for sure. Next seek feedback from teachers, mentors and speech coaches and that is the reason we used to have moot courts. Have you ever heard about moot courts everyone? What is the title of this? Like here we have uh, like moot courts in every, each and every uh, colleges. In each and every law college we use, we have these moot courts where students go for mock trials. They go for mock trials and trial scene and in that condition for that mock trials definitely they learn how to be the plaintiff, how to be the defendant, sometimes the lawyers, sometimes the attorney. So, completely you learn each and every aspect of judiciary. What are the things that you are going to face in future? Everything would be taught to you in a perfect manner, remember this thing. So, this is again a very important aspect of learning. Yes, with this we move towards like here we have understood that why and how practice and feedback plays an important role. Then further we, we talk about the cultural awareness. If the person is from different culture, background, cultural background, the audience like we, we must think about the audience also like which kind of audience do we have. Here in order to understand the cultural awareness, cultural context of your audience, you should have the cultural awareness. And Certain expressions, idioms, cultural references may need explanations for clarity when speaking to a diverse audience. So, whenever we talk about the audience, you must know who is the audience, whether the people are from legal background, whether the people are from medical background, whether they are from, uh, from, from village area, some illiterates are there or maybe some farmers are there. So, who are they? Point number one. Second point to which state they belong, if they belong to Haryana, Punjab, if they belong to uh, the areas which are rich in farming or uh, uh, whether these people belong to Gurugram or some industrial hubs, so your speech would be according to it, your stress would be according to it, your pace would be according to it, remember. So these things makes a lot of difference when you speak something. So, Yes, of course, cultural awareness plays an important role when you go for any kind of speech preparation or any kind of legal drafting. Further, we shall move up towards the stress in language. Now, this is the aspect which can create the soul of this lecture. If you are going to miss this thing, obviously 100 percent sure that you would not be able to cater any attention, any, any marks, any grades in stress and intonation part. Because in this particular slide, I would be discussing many other rules and regulations that are related to stress. Now coming back to stress, I would like to explain you few more things. Let us talk about certain things if I say stress. Now in this condition, what is the most important thing as if I told you that if I take up this word breakfast, if I take up this word and talk about banana. Let me, let me write down not in cursive handwriting, otherwise that will not be 
uh, perfect enough for you to understand the stress and intonation. Banana, if I talk about tomorrow, right, then university. Now, in this condition, looking at these words, how many syllables are they have? How many syllables are there? Breakfast, 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 two, right. So, we have two syllables here. Again, banana, banana. Again, we have three syllables here. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Can you speak with me? Tomorrow, here we have three syllables. Right, then university, u, university, yes. So, here we have u, ni, versity, we have four syllables, right. Now, in this condition, you must know that after finalizing the syllables, I told you how to find out the stress, you have to find out the stress pointing out on three parameters. First of all, the stress should be put on, if it is a noun, on first syllable, if it is a verb, on second syllable. If there is a root word from which a new word is formed, right, a new word is formed, remember, in that condition, the root word, wherever the root word is there, you will definitely put the stress on the same word, you know, on the same uh, letter, syllable, right. So, let us talk about these things once again that if it is a breakfast, where to put the stress? I am going to put the stress on first syllable, right, on the first syllable, breakfast. If I, it is a banana, yes, now again, if I am going to put the stress on banana, tomorrow, now stress on morrow, morrow, before this, university, here I am going to put the stress on uni. Let me clear it. Yes, here I am going to put the stress on uni here after I and before V. Uni, yes, here. So, this is the important thing where you have to understood. So, here you have to understand syllables, you have understood syllables and you have to under, you have understood stress. Now, what is the thing? If the word has one syllable, that means no stress on any. One or more, you can say two, I should, yeah, two or more syllable, that means you must have syllable, yes, stress. Clear? Next, how to pronounce stress? how to pronounce, pronounce the stress. Now, in this condition, right, the stressed should be, I should say, let us take up three things, louder, then it will be little, it will be little higher, and it will be little longer, longer. For example, if I say, if I take up this word person, if I take up this word beautiful, if I take up this word information and now looking at this word person, person, there are two syllables, but where am I going to put the stress on the first syllable? If I say beautiful, beautiful, then again I am going to put the stress on first one, beautiful, information below before M A, right. So, you have to use apostrophe, use apostrophe that is like this for the or you can say the next syllable, stressed syllable you can say, 
right. So, here you can use the apostrophe the post most important thing that you have to understand. Is that very much clear all of you? How to find out the syllable and how to put the stress clear? Now, I am going to tell you which are the rules on which you can understand the put the stress. There are 3 or 4 rules right. So, now I am going to just write down few rules for this. What is the rule number 1? Use stress how to use stress without dictionary. Basically, whenever we have a dictionary obviously, that will uh, be much uh, let me come up to the next uh, vacant slide if we have yes over here. So, if we can definitely go up to this side yes. So, let us talk about the rules. If I am going to talk about the rules of putting a stress without using dictionary, what are these rules? The rule number 1 is whenever noun first syllable, whenever noun put a stress on first syllable, if it is a verb then second syllable clear everyone. Next rule, rule number 3. Now, in this condition if there are 2, 1 for example, if there is I am just putting up the example picture, if there is minute, if we have, if we have money, water, doctor. Now, my question to all of you my dear learners tell me when I say picture, when I say water, when I say money, when I say some other word, I am going to put the stress on first syllable. What is the use of this? Why am I going to put the stress on first syllable? Any idea everyone? Because they all are noun and that is the reason the first syllable will take the stress. So, here picture minute, money, water, doctor. Is that clear everyone? So, rule number 1 is very much clear. If it is a noun, yes of course, the stress will be on first syllable. Secondly, if it is there, for example, the same rule follows with adjectives also, right? Noun, first syllable. Adjectives, if they are adjectives, obviously, they will take the stress on first syllable, same as noun. For example, clever, clever. Clever is the word adjective could be used as an adjective C will take the stress on that ok clear. So, let us talk about adjectives rule also. Third one I hope this thing is clear to all of you. Third one first syllable stress on first syllable. So, that means if I am going to take up the example like uh, happy, happy if I am going to take the example yellow useful, formal, tiring. Now, here I am going to put the stress on first syllable, happy first syllable will be stressed, right. Yellow first syllable will be stressed, useful, useful, formal, tiring, clear. So, in adjectives you must remember in adjectives and noun in both these things first syllable will be stressed clear understood. Now, rule number 3 whenever there are syllables more than 2 or 3 4 like this if there are 2 or 3 4 syllables then in a longer word most of the time it happens that the second last the second last syllable receives the stress. Second last syllable, for example, if I say, if I take up the word photography or if I say the word, uh, take up the word uh, like, I uh, will definitely write down over here, like if I say photography, if I take up the word beginning, B E G I N N I N G, beginning and let me, let me, let me some just find out few some space to write down. Yes, let us talk about this. Now, in this condition, if I am going to use these longer words, for example, situation or uh, information, let us take up information. 
Now, in this condition, information, right? So, whichever words, let me write down the fourth rule. The fourth rule here. So, here if I am going to tell you about this, in that condition, if the person, if the words end with, words ending with, with T I O N, sometimes C I A N, or sometimes you may have S I O N. In that condition, for example, information, if we have discussion, if I have politician, in that condition you must know that politician. So, here I am going to put the stress on this, on this, right? I am just going to use this black one, politician. Now, right? So, politician. Here I am going to put up the stress on penultimate, penultimate, that the second to last. So, politician here. Discussion. If I am going to take discussion, where to put the stress? Discussion here, right? Again, if I am going to use information, information, here I am going to use information, second to last, as I told you, formation, second to last. Is that clear, everyone? This is rule number 4. Next rule number, if I am going to talk to you is, uh, yes, the task for the day is you have to find out about situation, about revision because these are these are many uh, words these are there are many words actually with many vowels like maybe uh, four penta or maybe four vowels so four uh, syllables it depends so you have to find out the answers of this thing situation revision then you would uh, definitely find out about let me write down electrician okay so this is your homework you have to find out the answer to it. And then rule number next, if the words ending with I C, I C, can you few, can you name few of them? Economic, economic, dramatic, then further Atlantic. Now, Atlantic, scientific. Now, where are you going to put the stress? Again, before the second two syllables, the same kind of rule, penultimate, second to last. Same rule will be followed, remember. Eco, economic. So, where am I going to put the stress? No. I am just deleting the rest of the thing so that economic. Yes. So, where I am going to put the stress? No. Here. Or dramatic here. Atlantic again, Atlantic. Scientific, tific. So, here I am going to put the stress, remember. So, is it very much clear to all my dear learners that how am I going to put the stress? Okay, everyone. So, this is really very much clear. By now, the things have uh, become like what I think with the rules, with the with certain rules and regulations, you can definitely put stress and intonation to it. Then further we can talk about certain other parameters. Let us talk about the intonation in languages. Now intonation in languages actually refers to rise and fall of pitch and rhyme, rhythm in speech. They are really very much important when you go for any kind of intonations. It is used to convey various shades, shades of mood, shades of emotions, shades of your personality. So, meaning such as indicating questions sometimes, sometimes commands, sometimes statements. Do you remember while taking, asking a question, rising intonation, while answering the question, falling intonation, sorry, falling intonation, 
you must have the idea of all the pitch like where to rise and where to fall and then further expressing emotions like surprise or sarcasm. This could be shown by this aspect. In legal language, in legal language the correct intonation can help clarity of speakers intent and nature of communication. Then you must consider the courtroom scenario. Just think about the courtroom scenario where judge is addressing a defendant who is late for hearing. Now in this condition if the if judge is asking someone is uh, he is asking to the defendant that you are late. So, what would be his tone? You are late for your hearing. Let me see. So, this one would be stressed. The intonation, the rising falling intonation. You are late for the hearing. You are late for the hearing. Rising falling intonation. Here the judge seeking confirmation of the defendant's tardiness. In a very conjugal manner like he is treating it to be a very genuine case. No, this is absolutely incorrect. Falling intonation indicates a statement or a command and in that you are late for the hearing. You are late for the hearing. Now in this condition a falling intonation in this case judge is stating a fact or giving an instruction. So while giving the instruction falling intonation sometimes by sarcastic tone or by commenting someone rising intonation. Remember this is a very important part. And in this condition, yes, of course, we are going to write down and learn something new about intonation part also that how these intonations are going to play an important role. You have already learned all these part and you have cleared, clearly like understood the whole thing. When it comes to this thing, you must understand that intonations, they actually depends on pitch, pitch of voice and stress and rhythm. These two things actually uh, creates this sound and as if I told you about falling, rising and fall rise and fall rise intonation. Now falling intonation symbolized like this, rising intonation like this and this is rise, fall rise intonation. Okay? So these are like if I say about open questions open questions where wh question words detailed answers are required you must know that it will carry the following intonation falling intonation okay so so and so forth there are many other rules like this and then we have content words and some words which are uh, like uh, prepositions sometimes helping words function words some are content words and some are functions words for content words we put stress and for function words we don't so, for content words like noun, like adverb, like adjectives and several other open categories and when it comes to the, uh, to the side, when we talk about the uh, function words, they are prepositions, conjunctions, articles, they actually, uh, they are less stressed. Okay? So, you must know if I say she will be late to the party. So, since I told you that we have to identify the function words and content words, here you have to understand that she is the subject, it will be on rising point stressed, will be late to the party. So, here you have to understand that she will be late to the party. So, these three things would be stressed upon. Yeah? So, with this note, we move to the conclusion part where I think that you all have understood what is the importance of stress and intonation because they play a crucial element in judging the language of any person, in judging the temperament of any person and when it, is, it comes to spoken language, lawyers, judges, legal professionals, they judge a person from their way of speaking and this is how even you would be trained to go on the same track. So, in legal language you all must understand that where precision and clarity should work out because precision and clarity is at the highest paramount you know, you cannot skip that part and it actually plays an important role, correct usage of stress and intonation creates the whole scenario in a proper manner whatever we, where our intentions are and definitely it helps us to interpret the documents. 
the legal documents in a proper manner in a courtroom, sometimes in proceedings, sometimes while uh, negotiations, sometimes when we talk about the about ensuring our rights. So, I hope that with this lecture all of you might be trained perfectly about stress, intonation, syllables and accent, basically dealing with cultural verifications. So, with this note let me come up with the references side also like these are the books that I have referred intonation of colloquial English, communicative value of intonations, then further I am focused on English phonetics and phonology, fundamentals frequency in sentences, I have referred to an introduction of English intonation as I promised you all these things these books are going to be very much beneficial for all of you if you want to hone your skills of learning. So, with this note I am Dr. Divya Gupta signing off for now. Everyone wish you all the best and please start finding the places where you put stress and where you use this rising falling intonation. Remember all the rules that I have discussed till now and, and please start this is not the end of our journey obviously this is the beginning of a new era of learning right with me of course revise go through each and every lecture thank you everyone thank you